You're not scared of failing. You're scared of changing. Your brain calls it protection, but really it's paralysis. Let's decode why fear feels safer than freedom. This episode is brought to you by my HarperCollins published book, Mind Over Explicit Matter. Learn how artificial stimulation miswires your brain and what you can do to rewire it back to purpose, intimacy, and connection. Go to drtrishley.com backslash book. I'm Dr. Trish Lee, and this is my sacred neuroscience take on the book, The Mountain Is You by Brianna Wiest. This series isn't about motivation hacks. It's about understanding the wiring underneath self-sabotage, why your brain repeats patterns that keep you small, and of course, how to climb beyond them. Most people think self-sabotage is laziness or lack of discipline. It's not. It's a neural safety mechanism. Deep in your brain, the amygdala and the limbic system act like an alarm system together. Their job is to detect change. And when they do, they label it as threat. Every time you try to grow, that system fires off a warning. Wait, we've never been here before. Your brain confuses the unfamiliar with the unsafe. When your prefrontal cortex, the logical planner in your brain, tries to move forward, the amygdala overrides it. You freeze, procrastinate, or distract yourself. That's not weakness, it's neuroprotection. Let's think of it like this. It's like a mountain guide who once saved you from an avalanche, but now he stops you at every new trailhead, even when the weather's clear. I used to call it overthinking, but in reality, my nervous system was on high alert for many, many years. When I first ran my own QEG brain map during a period of constant avoidance, it showed massive high beta activity, the signature of fear and hypervigilance. My brain wasn't resisting success. It was just trying to keep me safe from change. Your brain's primary job isn't to make you happy. I wish it was. Its primary job is to predict what comes next. If chaos or disappointment were familiar to you growing up, your nervous system learned that stress feels safe. So when peace arrives, the prediction fails. Your brain sends discomfort signals until you recreate the chaos you recognize. That's the loop of self-sabotage, safety through suffering. And man, have I been there. But here's the good news. Prediction can be retrained through awareness and small, safe experiments, your brain learns that calm doesn't equal danger. In what I call sacred neuroscience, this moment of awareness is the first sacred act. Fear isn't the enemy. It's a compass pointing to where coherence is missing. When you witness fear without judgment, you deactivate the limbic alarm and you re-engage the prefrontal cortex. That's not just psychology, that's neuro-spiritual alchemy. Every time you breathe through discomfort instead of avoiding it, you rewire safety into your nervous system, maybe for the first time ever. That's how courage is born, not by removing fear, but by regulating it. Your mountain isn't made of failure. It's made of familiar fear. And when you understand that fear is your brain trying to protect you, you can climb past it with compassion. The goal isn't to be fearless, it's to be regulated in the face of fear. The beautiful thing is when I stopped fighting my nervous system and I started listening to it, I realized the mountain was not against me. It was actually building me. And on my brain map, I saw the evidence. It proved it. 
red chaos transformed into green calm. Okay, this is the first of four videos in my series. So stay with me. The next video is coming up on the screen now. It's called The Dopamine Illusion, How Avoidance Rewards the Brain. So check out the next episode and we'll uncover the chemistry of self-sabotage, how your brain turns avoidance into a dopamine hit, and how you can reclaim it for energy that you could put toward growth instead. So I'll see you in the next video. This is what it takes to be super normal.